Let's talk about valve maintenance. Here I have the piston removed from my instrument just to save a little time for the video. Once you take it out like this you want to clean the surface. For this I use a microfiber cloth. You can buy these from Amazon or from local stores I'm sure. Auto parts stores have them sometimes. The important thing is you don't want lint as you're doing this and you want the cloth to hold together as you're crossing over the sort of sharp surfaces here or places like against the valve guide where it might catch. So you don't want to leave little snags in, in your path as you go. So I'm cleaning off the surface using a little bit of pressure. This helps to get rid of any buildup, any uh, residue of uh, mineral deposits, things like that, that might still be on the valve. I use the term valve loosely here in my own conversation, and I really mean the piston. Now the valve guide is critical as well. That's the plastic piece on this valve, or in some cases it's metal. Here at the top, it goes down in the slot inside the cylinder here. And sometimes residue or buildup can occur alongside this. So as I'm wiping it down with this cloth, well, without the cloth here, I've got my thumbnail that I'll use this way and my fingernail this way with the cloth behind them to try and get around that, that little guide. Make sure nothing stays there that I don't want. Also, there can be some buildup on the top and bottom surfaces, these surfaces here. So again, as I'm rubbing it down, I put a lot of pressure on that. Go around, and the same with the top. We want to get rid of any deposits there. If you have deposits that are just tough and you can't get off with the cloth, you might try a popsicle stick or some plastic uh, utensil, plastic spoon perhaps, and just rub that way if you have to scrape it off. Um, the valve's tough enough to take that, but I would not use metal to do it. If you keep it clean though, that really won't happen, so that's why I like to do this every time I take the piston out. Occasionally it'll get built up inside these as well. Blockades are called these passageways. I've got this little brush, an HW Products cleaning brush, that I can push through like that. If it comes out clean on the other side, then I know I'm okay. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to wipe that off as well and do it a few more times until the passageways are clean. You want to look inside the bottom, make sure there's no buildup of gunk in there. That can happen. As the spring works its way, compresses and uncompresses inside here, it'll scrape that gunk loose. It'll end up then here and cause the valve to stick, so you don't want that. Same goes to the inside the casing. You want to take off the bottom cap and clean that well so there's no residue there also, and clean off the spring while you're at it. So now we have it clean. Oh, and just as a by the by here, um, in the top of all these pistons, there's a vent hole. You can see it right here. And that corresponds to the vent hole that's in the bottom, right there. That lets the air pass through this as it moves up and down, so you don't get a, um, any sluggishness that would cause by air not being able to escape properly. So that helps the piston to move freely. If you hear a whistling sound, especially as you move the valve up and down, uh, that's probably because that vent hole is clogged. In some cases, I push this top pad down again. In some cases, the pad is large, too large, and it can actually cover the hole almost entirely. This one encroaches a little on the hole, but not much, and it's just fine. This is the standard pad that came with the Adams horn. If you're having noise on the valve, uh, if the noise is on the upstroke when the valve comes back to the top, that is probably due to this pad here. That's what controls that. If the noise is on the downstroke when you push the valve down, that is either this pad that's under the cap, under the finger button, or in the case of the Adams, I have an additional pad right here. Some other horns have this as well. Could be either one of those contributing to the noise on the downstroke. So now we have it clean. I'm going to oil it before I put it back in. I use Hetman Light Piston Oil. It's a synthetic oil. It's their lightest grade, lubricant one. And it's thin enough that I can use quite a lot of it, which I really like to do. Um, talking to my repairman, Lee Stouffer, he's recommended that same thing. Uh, using a lot of oil. So I do that as I put it down. I don't want the valve to go in on a metal-to-metal basis. I want it to slide against oil, not slide against metal. So I oil every part of it as it goes in, make sure it turns nice and freely. That seems to be pretty good. 
Now a lot of people at this point would seat the, uh, the valve guide in the slot and screw the cap back on and they'd be all set to go. The problem with doing that is this valve casing now is lying at an angle. The, val the valve spring inside the casing is probably lying in what would be the bottom of this. So as you insert the piston back in, the edge of the valve spring may be catching here instead of seating nicely in here. There's a corresponding groove in the bottom of this um, bottom cap on the valve that's meant to keep the spring seated there as well. So before I put the piston back in, I'm going to put a little more oil on to get... So as I put the piston back in, I'm going to possibly wiggle the horn even a little bit and bounce this up and down as I turn it so that when I move it now toward the bottom of this this free travel here I'm not hearing noises. That means that the spring has gotten seated in the bottom groove of this bottom cap and also underneath the piston here. Then I'm free to go ahead and screw the top down. If I've done all this correctly the piston moves nice and freely and quietly. If you do all this on a regular basis your horn will stay happy and you'll stay happy. The valves will keep moving smoothly and they'll last a whole lot longer.